Hi everyone, David Mailing today. We're going to do something really cool. This is part three of our getting data, stock market data, and doing an analysis on it. It may not look like it from the surface, but we've already done a video on how to get the data out of Yahoo Finance through Python. The second one, we did moving averages. In this one, we're going to do the daily return, which is an additional test, and I'm going to show you some cool little extras here. And then the fourth part, the next one, is going to be where we actually uh, predict and forecast stock market stuff so right now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this and if you look at my screen we need the daily return we want to look at you know how homogenous or how distributed is this data can we go and go further with this with a forecast and expect a reasonable result so when you look at this i've got my stock underscore df which is my data frame of my data my stock data which is tesla data for the past, I don't remember, seven years or something like that. And anyway, um, so what I want to do is I want a daily return off of it, which is basically a new column. See what I'm doing right here? All the daily return off of the adjusted close, which is available net data from uh, the first video. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it, okay? And we're getting the percent change of that. See it? Dot percent change. So we put that into the daily return because that's how much it returns every day. And then what we want to do is we're going to use Seaborn for this to plot this in a distribution plot. That's what, that's what DIS plot is of our data frame of this daily return. We're going to remove uh, not or ones where there's no, it's not a number uh, NAs. Um, we're using bins of 100. You could use different. You could use bins of 20, but the problem is then it's very small. You want to be able to see little patterns, things sticking out. And if I use too small of a number of bins, then the problem is, is I'm not going to see enough and it might look like a normal distribution when it's not. So by having 100 bins, somewhere between 50 and 100 bins, you'll be better off. I like to use the higher end of it. Color could be any color you want. In this case, I used goldenrod in a second. I'm going to show you all the different colors. You can change to whatever you want. There's colors like tomato and there's some cool name colors and they're, they're kind of like pastelish looking colors, some of them, not all of them. Uh, the height in this case is three because I want to fit it inside of uh, our Jupyter notebooks here. And the aspect in this case is 23 divided by six or 23 to six. Uh, again, I've got uh, tomato commented out here in case you want to see that, we could do that. We could take goldenrod, change this to tomato. So that's goldenrod down below. Um, might help I spell tomato correctly. And if I go and do this, and then it just says title of daily return, we're just adding that to it and show. If we don't use the show, we're not going to see it. So if I do that, and control enter, there we go. Look at that. Now it's that's with tomato. And I can go back to goldenrod, or I can pick any color I want. Now, if you don't know what the colors are, it's fine. I haven't memorized them all, so that doesn't, it's not a big deal. So control enter here, there's back to goldenrod. It doesn't matter. Um, but anyway, if you want to see the colors, what I've done down below is this is the code. So you've seen the code to get the daily return. This tells you right here if it's distributed normally or not. And it basically is for the most part. Everything's within basically one or two standard deviations of the mean, which is the middle. Now, and the mean could be a little bit off of 0, 0.0. That's fine. But down below here, you see I'm bringing an IPython display image in IPython.core.display. HTML. I'm importing the HTML from that one and importing image from this one. And what that does is it will give me a picture image that I can bring in. So I actually have a picture that I put in on my local under users and my user number ID. And then I've also got a file name, right, which is the path. Which is, so it's just going to take this path plus the name of the file. In this case, it's called Python Colors 1. It could be anything. Um, that I saved on my laptop. And then this is just the width is 600, height 200. And that puts it in here. So I've got this whole long list of all the different colors I can use. Yes, obviously there's colors like yellow and, and red, but there's also colors like salmon, if you want something that's a little bit pinkish orange. Tomato, which you just saw above. Goldenrods right here. We could pick Navajo. Let's see what that looks like. So I can go right back here into my code. And oops, let's leave that first right or mark there. What do you say? Navajo white. Let's see what that does. 
There it is. It's very light, like a yellow, very, very light orangey color. Uh, maybe I want a sandy brown. Let's try that. You can pick any color you want, and this is just how you change the colors quickly and easily. Here's sandy brown, a little bit orangey versus the tomato, which is fine. It doesn't matter. You can pick whatever you want. Anyway, so we've gone to look at this and quickly, just like the previous one where we're looking at the moving averages, we're trying to see how this data looks. And right here, you can clearly see it's normally distributed very well. And uh, I mean, there's no, no such thing as perfect you're going to find in the stock market. Um, so we can proceed further to our next video where we're going to go and forecast this. And then I just I wanted to give you a nice little added feature here. You don't have to do this, but this is cool for when you're documenting stuff in Jupyter Notebooks. You can quickly bring in an image. So if you're something that you want that's too big or too much data or you don't want to create a whole new bit of code to display it, all you got to do is this little bit of code right here, and you can bring in any image that you want, just like I did right here, and it fits straight into your Jupyter Notebook. And then down below, you'll see we're going to get to creating test and training data sets, and then we're going to go and forecast this stuff and do some really cool stuff. So again, if you haven't seen it already, please go back and see videos one and two. Come back and watch this one again, and then go on to watch the next one as soon as I put that up. And then try it with your own data, and that's how you learn data science and data analytics and become really good at it, is by trying it yourself on your own data. Pick another. It's like I did Tesla here. Pick another one. You could pick Tesla again, but you could pick uh, some kind of other ETF, IBM, Microsoft, any uh, stock market data that you would like that's publicly traded and enter it in. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful and informational. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share, and have a great day.